What's happening everyone, my name is Alex and welcome back! In today's video we are checking out the latest electric bicycle from Haybike. The one that we have here today is called the EC1 ST and I'm assuming that the ST part of the name comes from the fact that this is a step-through bike. So the other version of this bike, the EC, is not a step-through bike, so yes, I do prefer this one over the previous model. Not to mention the price is kind of similar. Alright, so this bike is uh, compliant with all the EU regulations for e-bike and of course all the UK regulations for um, e-bikes. So you can legally ride this bike on the road. The bike is powered by a 250 watt motor that's located in the rear wheel. There we also have hydraulic disc brakes on the front and on the back and a very attractive design. Alright, and with that being said, let's start by doing a bit of an unboxing just so I can show you how the bike comes packed in the box and what you have to do to get this ready and on the road. Alright, so we get a fairly big box as you imagine and inside the box you're going to find the bike packed very well so it's not going to get damaged during transportation. Now you do have to do a bit of an installation when you first take this out of the box. You basically have to put the front wheel together, the front mudguard here, together you have to put the handlebar together. That means that you have to kind of remove the screen, the light and then you also have to put the brake uh, levers together or the brake assembly together. I had some issues with one of the screws here, so whenever you're putting that together, take your time, do it slowly so you don't mess up the screw as um, I did. After all, it takes about I don't know, 45 minutes to get this ready and uh, on the road. I also forgot to mention that you have to put the pedals um, together. Taking a look at the bike itself, well, we have a very attractive design. This is probably one of the best looking e-bikes that I got to try up until now, at least for this size of an e-bike. The battery pack is located in the frame here, so the battery pack is not sticking out like other e-bikes that I've seen in the past. Now, this is not the largest capacity battery pack. This is also removable from the frame here, so if you want, you can take that with you upstairs or wherever you want to charge it. Now, the manufacturer says that you can get up to 100 kilometers on one charge, but maybe that is in perfect riding conditions, perfect weather if you're not that heavy and so on. From my testing, um, I can get about 50 kilometers if I use assistance level 3 for pedaling basically, so I don't want to put that much effort in. We also have a lot of hills um, around here and I'm also a bit on the heavier side. So. The battery life will depend a lot of your environment, how heavy you are and uh, your style of riding. But me personally, I can get about 50 kilometers on one charge. The tires used on this bike are road tires. These are nice and grippy on surfaces like this. And these are also puncture resistant tires. Very important because this way you're not going to get um, flat tires. I also love the reflective band that we have um, all around it. First of all, the bike looks cool with those um, bands, but you're also going to be more visible whenever you're riding at night. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this bike gets hydraulic disc brakes on the front and on the back. The disc brakes on this one are also somewhat larger than most other e-bikes that I got to try in the past. Now the stopping power from these um, brakes is exceptionally good as well. I can probably go as far as saying that it's one of the best for braking um, from all the e-bikes that I got to try up until now. Now I did notice a bit of noise coming from the front brake whenever you're riding. Normally there is no noise when you're braking but when you're riding normally there is a bit um, of noise but overall it's not um, bad. We also have mud guards on the back and of course on the front here. The mud guards are made out of plastic. Now here where I live it doesn't really rain so I never had a chance to try the bike in the rain but from the looks of them they do look like they would protect you from all that water um, being splashed on you but again I haven't actually tried the bike um, when it rains. On the right hand side here we have a 7 gear Shimano shifter. Now this is an entry level Shimano shifter but shifting gears up and down is done flawlessly. I did have to adjust um, that shifter a bit when I first took the bike out of the box but now it does um, work good. So no problems riding the bike just as a regular bike if you don't want to actually use the electric motor. Talking about the electric motor, so yes the electric motor is located in the rear wheel here. As for power, well this is exactly what you'd expect from a 250 watt motor. Um, this is the legal um, power basically so you can actually ride these bikes legally on the road. So if you're riding on a flat surface like this road here you can easily reach the top speed of the bike. The bike is also limited to 25 kilometers an hour so you can easily reach that and you will feel the bike assisting you, helping you. This has a speed sensor 
but unlike all the other speed sensors that I've tried with many bikes in the past, this one engages faster, so as soon as you start pedaling, the bike starts assisting you. With many other e-bikes that I got to try in the past, you have to start pedaling, you have to move quite a bit before the bike starts assisting you. Well, this one is much faster, so as soon as you push that pedal, you kind of feel the bike assisting you. So the speed, the speed sensor that they used in this bike is much better than 99% of the speed sensors that I've tried in other um, e-bikes. Now, with a 250 watt motor as we have for this bike, you're not gonna have that much power when you're going uphill. So for uphills, again, it really depends how steep that hill is, you will have to put a lot of effort into pedaling, basically. The bike will assist you, but you still have to do most of the work. So let me show you how climbing a steep hill works. All right, so next I wanna show you how the bike could do if you are riding on a steeper hill. So we have the bike in the first gear and assistance level three. So as soon as you start pedaling, of course, the bike will start assisting you. And this is our hill here. I'm not sure if you can actually see on the camera how steep it is. You can definitely hear the motor. And yes, the motor is helping, but when you're going on a hill as steep as this, it's definitely not gonna be easy. You do have to put a lot of effort into climbing hills like this now this region here has a lot of hills these hills are not typically found in other regions i'm gonna say so you're probably not gonna find hills like this everywhere however you do have to put some effort into pedaling if you have steep hills uh, like this All right, moving on to the kickstand. Well, the kickstand on this bike is made of a combination of plastic and metal, but it is a bit more special than most kickstands out there. So you can actually adjust the height of the kickstand because as we've all um, tried in the past and seen in the past, there are different surfaces where you're gonna park your bicycle, basically. Well, this one you can make higher or lower. So it's much nicer to have a kickstand like this than a regular kickstand that doesn't actually adjust in height. So I'm very happy to see that they actually included that. The pedals here are made out of metal. They do work really well. And then we're moving on to the seat. Now, the seat does look super cool as you see it. However, this is not the most comfortable seat out there. I would definitely upgrade the seat after you ride for about 20 minutes, half an hour you do feel a bit of pain on the backside there. So this is definitely not my favorite seat um, in the world. Now, you've probably noticed that we don't have a front or rear suspension either. However, with these tires that we get, the ride is actually pretty comfortable. I wasn't expecting the ride would be that comfortable, but I have to say that it almost feels like you have a front suspension. So it is pretty comfortable, except for the seat that doesn't have as much padding. Since we are talking about the seat, behind the seat here, we also have a reflector. So we don't actually have a rear light. I kind of wish the bike would have had a rear light. Talking about lights on the front, we do have a headlight. The headlight is really bright. So whenever you're riding at night, it will light up the path ahead of you very well. However, it is a bit difficult to see the light if you are riding during the day. But overall, it is a nice and bright light for night riding. Moving on to the handlebar. The handlebar is fairly wide, but this is not adjustable in height. So whenever you are riding, you will have to lean onto the handlebar a bit. And after you ride for a little bit, you will notice a bit of pressure on your wrist. So you do have that position where you're kind of leaning forward a bit. I'm not the biggest fan of that. I do prefer bikes where you can actually raise the handlebar a bit because it makes the riding position a bit more comfortable. The grips here are made out of this material that kind of feels like leather. I don't believe it's real leather, but they do feel really nice. They don't move at all um, either. Then we have our brake levers here that of course are made out of um, metal. We have the control buttons right here. The power button is um, at the bottom, just in case you didn't see it. In the center here, we have the screen. Now, the screen is fairly large. It will show you the speed. It will show you how many kilometers you've done. It will show the battery that um, you have. 
It's not the most amazing screen out there, but it definitely works good and you can clearly see the screen even in direct sunlight. So on a super bright day like today, you can easily see that screen. When you turn on the headlight for the bike, the screen also lights up. So you're going to be able to see the screen at night as well. On the right hand side here, we have the bell. Not the best sounding bell out there. Maybe if I do this, it's going to sound better. That uh, definitely sounds better. And then we have the shifter here and of course um, the other um, brake. All right, so let me quickly show you how you would ride this bike. So we basically have the power button right here. You hold this press for about three seconds or so. And then the bike comes on and you can definitely see the screen. Now I'm happy that we can see the screen even if it's a super uh, bright uh, day out. All right, so we have three levels of assistance. You change levels of assistance from the plus or the minus. So we're gonna go in um, assistance level three. I believe you can also modify those levels of um, assistance as well, but I left it just as it comes out um, of the box. So this bike has a speed sensor, but unlike most other bikes that I tried in the past, as soon as you push the pedal, the bike will assist you. With other bikes that I tried in the past, you kind of have to move um, and then the bike starts assisting you. Well, with this one, it's much faster. It almost feels like you have a torque sensor, but you don't. But still, it is much better than um, all the other bikes that I tried in the past. At least bikes in this um, price range. Alright, so let's start riding. So as soon as you start pedaling, you can hear the motor um, assisting you right away. We'll go in assistance level 2. So you can hear the motor for sure. Let me show you how the brakes work in just a second. So we'll just go this way and we'll break right, uh, right after the pedestrian crossing, so around here somewhere. So if you want, you can definitely lock that uh, front and um, rear wheel. Other than that, the bike has a lot of power for this kind of uh, terrain, I'm gonna say. So if you don't go over uh, very steep hills. As soon as you get to steeper hills, for example, here, let's uh, gear down. So on a hill like this, the bike will definitely struggle and you do have to put a lot of effort into pedaling. But this is the same with most uh, bikes that have a 250 watt motor. If you're more power, you're gonna have to get a bike that's not exactly road legal. So yes. On hills, you will have to put some effort into pedaling. And I guess we'll go this way. Overall, pretty quiet bike. The brakes work really good. So on flat surfaces, plenty of power. Not that much power on uh, hills, but that was uh, to be expected. So this is it to ride this bike, basically. So to quickly conclude this video, this bike looks really good, probably one of the best looking bikes out there. The build quality is really good as well. I love the fact that you don't even see the welding spots anywhere on the frame here. The paint job on it is also really good. It doesn't make any noise whenever you're riding, except for that front brake that makes a bit of noise. It's barely noticeable, but it's definitely there. The 250 watt motor has plenty of power for these kind of roads. Now, uphill, as I said, you can't really expect that much from a 250 watt motor, but it does decent enough for a 250 watt motor. Overall, it is a really nice bike. The build quality, as I said, it's really good. So I do love this bike a lot, and I think that it's priced right as well. All right, guys, hopefully this video was useful. Don't forget to press that like button, and I'll see you in the next video.